In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can download a PIP object from CyberLink's Director Zone and install it and use it in a particular project you're working on. In order to get to the Director Zone, you have to become a subscriber, but to get an account is easy for those who own PowerDirector. You simply can click on the gear at the very top that will get you to your settings menu. When you're in the settings menu, you can click on the director zone option. And my version is the third from the bottom on the left panel. And I'll click on that. And here's the option where I can get an account if I do not have one. But if I do, all I can do is put in my email address and then my chosen password and then click on sign in. There's also a button option to auto sign into Director Zone that will link you to Director Zone every time you load PowerDirector. That tends to be not my case, so I leave this one unchecked. There's another privacy rules option at the bottom that allows Director Zone to gather editing information. I tend to turn that off. You can use whatever option is preferable to you. So I could put my email and password in here and click on sign in. Another way to get into that is simply go to the website. I have done that already. And here I'm signed in here to Director Zone. And I, we have the drop down menu at the top. We'll have all kinds of advertising or promotional stuff that will pop up. And then we have many of the things we can get from the Director Zone. What I'm going to do is focus in this case on PIP objects. So I have clicked here already, and these are the PIP objects that are available to me. One thing that's important to realize that is that you can sort each of these general options by filters. I can look at all of them this month only. I can look at the time they were uploaded or the style of the object. This gives me a nice way to get a subset of all the things that are on available at the director zone and not have to look at every single thing that's possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead filter by all. I'll go 16 by 9, which is the ratio of my current project. And then let me take one of these frames and I'll make that the, the PIP object I want to download in this example lesson. I'll simply click on that and it will take me to another screen. And in this screen, we have information about that particular object. We see that the type is a frame. We find out when it was uploaded, how many times it's been downloaded, what the aspect ratio is, and also what versions of PowerDirector it's compatible with. All this has been put in by the uploading person. So what I'm going to do is simply click on the download button by the image of the PIP object and that will take me to my download and here I can save it. I'll click on the Save As in my case and I have a subfolder here called Director Zone. I can rename it if I want to. I don't like the name Frame. I'll just call this uh, My Test Frame and then click on Save. Now I've saved it. I can also simply go to the Open Folder and now I've opened that folder with that. You notice the particle ends in the extension DZP, Director Zone Particle. Now, once I've done that, is it available in my copy of PowerDirector? The answer is no. Well, let me show you. We're back to PowerDirector, and I'm going to go into my video overlay or my PIP room. And when I click on that, here are all my, all my objects. I'm going to click on the down arrow at the top and choose Downloaded. Now I have two promo elements here and nothing else. I don't see my new object. Why? Because you have to click on it in the folder you downloaded it to before it's actually installed in PowerDirector. I'll go back to my folder view and now I'm going to double click on it and now it says the PIP template was successfully installed and is ready to use. So I'll click on OK and we'll go back to my copy of PowerDirector and now here is my object. It's now available to me. So what I'm going to do is take and drag this and drop this down into track number two and we'll increase the duration 
to at least match what we have of our video clip. And then when I want to play this, you notice now my video clip is playing behind the pip object, which is serving as a frame. Now in this case, there's something else I would like to do since it's a framed object, is I would like to resize my video clip a little bit. Easiest way to do that is to double click on the video. That will get me into my pip designer for the video. And now I'm going to change the opacity of that. I'm going to dial it back a little bit so I can see what's around it. And then we're going to shrink it down so it fits a little tighter. And more centered here inside my frame. Then we'll dial the opacity, slide it back up on the left side back to 100%. Click on OK. And now I see more of my video in the frame behind my PIP object. But that's one simple way in which you can add PIP objects to your toolbox in CyberLink PowerDirector by using Director Zone. One thing I want to also let you know is you can simply delete it. If I click on it, if I right click on it, I have Delete Only for Custom or Download. So I can delete it. And it asks me if I'm sure, and it's yes, and so now it's gone. However, I want you to notice that that only deleted it from its hook into PowerDirector. If I click back on my Director Zone, it's still there. If I want to totally remove it from my system, I need to go to the file where I downloaded the PIP object, and then I need to right-click on it and click on Delete, and that would remove it forever. I can re-download it later if I want to, or I can leave it here and install it or uninstall it as often as I wish. So that's a bit of a look at taking a PIP object from the Director Zone and putting it in your copy of PowerDirector for your own use.